Welcome everyone, I'm Susie Spencer and I'm joined today by Jackie Brinkerhoff. Did you know that according to a recent IDSA report, 94% of breaches are identity related, yet 99% of those breaches were totally preventable. Jackie, what does that even mean? What exactly is an identity related breach? Well, if you look at it, um, the perimeter around an organization basically has dissolved. And so now where the bad guys or the cyber attacks are actually being targeted are the workers, the people who actually have access to the network. And so once those cyber criminals uh, compromise those accounts, they're able to get in and start moving laterally and start identifying where the data is that they're wanting to steal. So when we're talking about identity related breaches, we're talking about something that's been compromised um, at an identity and think of yourself as a worker or a contractor, we are all digital identities. Think of also software bots, those are identities. So that is what that's referring to is those identities somehow were compromised and attacks were actually ensued. Excellent, thank you. Um, so this really begs the question, how do organizations not become one of those statistics? What can they do to, to kind of set up that security perimeter around their organization? Well, you know, there's a lot of organizations that are taking an identity related approach to securing, you know, access, and that's great. However, you know, we were talking about this false sense of security, and, and so, really what we're seeing is that there's quite a few blind spots and things that some organizations are not paying attention to. Um, and so those, there's three particular areas. And the first one, the first blind spot or the first area uh, to address is the lack of visibility that many of these organizations have or don't have visibility. Um, if you think about it, you can't protect what you can't see. And so if you look at last year, and there was a lot of a lot going on, workers were going home to work from home and a lot of applications were being loaded up onto the cloud. Um, when change happens, cyber attackers love that because with change, there's chaos, no one's paying much attention and there's, there's things that go missed. And so by being able to get complete visibility of all user identities that are um, uh, connecting to your network and knowing who's accessing what and should they be accessing it and how are they using that access, that type of visibility is crucial to be able to securing those identities. Um, and so if you look at a CISO, their biggest, one of their biggest headaches is visibility. Um, there are some organizations out there that have tens or hundreds of thousands of workers and digital identities accessing their network. How do you gain visibility into like contractors that come and go? Even think about last year, there was a lot of people that were coming and going because uh, assembly lines were being brought up um, for you know, temporary jobs and people were furloughed. All of these access points are points of vulnerability and having that visibility um, again is super key. And once you have that visibility, that's where you can start to really see your gaps. Where are my gaps in, in my user access, for example? Um, so how do you think organizations got there? Like what's the current state of a user's access, especially given you know, this shift to remote workforce? Yeah, um, like I was mentioning, there was a lot of new applications, uh, cloud applications that were being onboarded and stood up. So that way work could continue. So the name of the game, at least last year was productivity. You know, typically, you know, you're looking, your IT and security teams are trying to balance the aspects of enabling productivity and speed, but while also securing the infrastructure. But what we saw last year was that security got put into the back seat and productivity got put into the driver's seat. And so there was really what happened was there's a lot of tools that were being used to grant access, but not necessarily not necessarily with the insight or the forth, uh, with the thought of being able to control it. And mm -hmm. so uh, very basic lifecycle management and provisioning tools were used, and unfortunately, over provisioning happened. And what that means is that people were gaining access to applications, um, and uh, they, access was just getting doled out. And 
the work was continuing. So that was important. But what's happened is that a lot of organizations need to go back and clean that up because too much access um, from what we can see was granted. And now again, like I mentioned, all those points of access are doors for these cyber criminals to potentially get in. And so um, if you've got too much access out there, then you've got a lot of doorways opened. Um, in addition to that, we, we also see and have seen um, workers like you and me, Susie, uh, needing to get work done and they might have not been able to get their, uh, their applications from IT. So what they did was they went out and started downloading free trialware or putting application licenses on their credit cards and has created a huge shadow IT problem, which we also refer to as shadow access. Again, remember what I mentioned, you can't protect what you can't see. And so if you've got a lot of access points happening that are going undetected by your IT and security teams, that again is a huge issue. And so now it's really time to clean house. A lot of organizations um, get to have this opportunity to go clean house, start right-sizing the access for each individual identity and user. Um, and having the right tool to do that makes the work a lot easier and a lot faster. So that way your human folks don't necessarily have to be doing that for spreadsheets and such. Um, and really looking at it from the standpoint of taking away access that's not being used. If they don't really need it, it should be taken away. I kind of refer to it as a use it or lose it model, um, but in the industry, it's known as least privilege. Oh, thanks, Jackie. And it really is, it really is a big issue that a lot of organizations just aren't even paying attention to. In fact, from a recent study that we did with Tag Cyber, we found that 75% of compromises in an organization come from over entitled or over permissioned users. So it really is time for organizations and it critical for you to go back in and clean up that access as Jackie mentioned. So there's a third area that organizations can focus on to help prevent breaches and make sure that they are secure and compliant. And what is that Jackie? That is lack of governance and addressing the lack of governance. And when you think of governance, some people think of just audits and compliance. It's so much more. Um, think of governance as controls. These are the access controls, or I like to refer to them as the house rules. For your organization, what are the rules for your users to be able to access information? Should your salespeople be able to access information in the finance uh, system? Should your marketing folks be able to see what's happening in shipping? That, that question should be answered and policy should be put in place that help to make those decisions. So that way humans are not having to. And that way you drive a consistency across your organization so that you know all salespeople coming on board get access to all the sales tools they need, but specifically even fine grained down. So let's say you even hire someone as a sales rep to run the California and uh, Pacific Coast um, territory. Well, when they grant them access, to Salesforce, let's say you're using that as your CRM, you're not gonna to wanna to grant them complete access to all the data in Salesforce. You just want that person to have access to what is rele relevant to their job and their territory. So that means seeing customer accounts that just are along that, that Pacific coast, for instance. So when we're talking about controls, it's really just about making sure that the right people are accessing the right things in order to do their jobs successfully. And that also helps to ensure that data is well protected. So think about not only Salesforce and these uh, ERP systems that house really critical customer information that should be protected and needs to be protected, not only for security and compliance reasons, but think about all of the data you export and put into spreadsheets and pretty PowerPoints and where they're getting stored. All that unstructured data and all those repositories also should be governed with proper access controls and being able to then go back and have let's go back up to the top again and talk about visibility so that way you can see who truly is accessing what and what they're doing with that access excellent thank you jackie well thank you all for spending time with us today to 
review this interesting topic and it really we can see how it can seem overwhelming for organizations to address all of these well how do i address my visibility and my over permission users and put governance in place without these capabilities no wonder we're seeing that high statistic on on breaches but the good news is that identity security can help you address all of these issues very easily and really drastically change your chance of becoming one of those statistics so if you would like more information please visit us at sailpoint.com visit our demos and you can see how exactly we can help you address this issue today thank you so much